Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. Now to draw a new one. You guys kind of see what's going on there, what it comes back down to. Um, what was once resistance becomes support, right? So if you take this same box, I could easily just move it over here and look, this was resistance all the way across. All right. So this all works together in theory. But let's take a look now where it should go or could go next now that that move has already been made. So we went low to high to low. Now we go period high, which is not much of a high now in contrast in retrospect to low to now our new high here. And where can it go from that move here to here? Actually, I need to move it a little bit. Down just a hair. Okay. In ratio from where it was to where it's going, it made quite a, quite a drop back. So when profit was taken, and this thing, I would consider this overextended, if you will, because it went on quite a nice tear. It had to pull back to recharge. To what level? Well, if you're looking at volume and you're looking at support, this makes a lot of sense. But it also lines up with the 261.8 on the Fibonacci. Would I have set that as a target? No, but I would have known that in this box right here, once it failed this zone, I gotta go back to the uh, rectangle here. This little area right in here, okay? In that Fibonacci zone. Once it failed that zone to bounce, it's not a, it's not a trade I'm gonna be in. Okay, if we're looking at monthly candles, this all happens over a very long period of time. This is over 30 days, but as this is not a trade I'm looking to, to long. We're not going higher until it can retake that level. So I'm gonna get out of this and I'm gonna remove that, okay? So we're, we're creating zones now based on that 61.8 and the 50 is all I'm doing with these boxes, these rectangles. Now that we've made that move, period low, High to low to high. We can now go very low. Oop. Forgive me. I gotta keep changing the drawings back. All right. Low to high to low. Now on these candles, if you did it from the first candle here, okay, that's that first test of this support zone. This is a whole month that's gone by. You come right back down and test it again. I would have zoomed in a little bit right here. You get two tests of that zone. It does not break above the 23.6 on, on the following month, the consequential month. So with it fails to break above, if you're trading this for a long-term position, you can kind of expect some level of consolidation. You should. I mean, it just blew through all the volume that it had accumulated over here in a relatively short period of time. So it comes back to accumulate. It's testing the support zone. But where do I want ultimately on a long position to start taking profit or look at start taking profit, guys, is from the period low, to period high. And I'm a little bit off on this here. I've zoomed in. Back to the period low, here's that 61.8 in the 50 again. Well, it's right where the 100 essentially was before. Now, we had broken above the 100 a little bit here, but now we can actually see in the same zone is now becoming even more key between the 61.8 and the 50. Why? Because after a retracement, if I'm buying down here, I'm going to try to take some profit off the table in here, at least some. If it can blow above this 61.8, I'm good to the 100, just like I was before. We saw that. And I was. But I'm going to take profit of 61.8 until it can prove to me it can break out of this. Because if it fails, I'm likely going back to the zone. So the only thing I've done here from that period to this period to this period, and we're on this month here, this is October of 2018, is try to determine at what 
point, I'm going to take profit off the table. And I would like to take profit at where it failed first, okay? Clearly a failure of the stock price in this month. And an overlapping Fibonacci ratio all coinciding in this box. So now I'm actually, what I do is take the box and just extend it out because this is now becoming a period of support and or resistance. Right now, because we're down here, this is going to be resistance. I like to draw it in red until it's green. You know, it has to break above. So now that we've gone there and we've actually made it to the 61.8, you see what we're doing here. Okay. So you got some profit taking, but it's not failing. It's holding this zone and it's holding it pretty well. And we got one final test down after multiple tests, actually. But we can't break above the 78.6. And it doesn't even bother in the following month. It's just gone. Gets up to the 100, pulls back just a tiny tad, and then we just keep going. And once we're above this line, we're going to keep on running. Where to? Let's try to gauge. If you can't tell, I use extensions a lot more than anything else. Um, why? I do it to set targets, targets of consideration. Now that we've made that move, this Fibonacci, I really don't necessarily need it anymore. If you want to um, leave it, some things that you can do on this particular one is just go in and remove the one, the check marks that are really aren't necessarily relevant. Um, maybe you leave these on there. You could just kind of do that. You could uh, make them smaller, make them, you know, hashes or something like that. Something similar. So that way it's not in your way of what you're trying to do. And otherwise, you can end up with so many lines in your chart into the future. You're like, especially when you move to the daily, it's like, well, what am I looking at? What ratio, what time frame was this on? Um, so if you do want to uh, change the color, you can change the, um, the type of line and make some modifications on your own personal indicator on that particular time frame can help so that when you're looking at it at a more of a, of a broken down time frame, you'll be able to see it in a different way. And you'll know, oh, yeah, okay, so what, thing, what things to consider is we were looking at a period of almost a full year to make this move here. So you're sitting on AMD that you bought it, you know, into the, 17, 18 dollar range, and you're going to be selling, and you already know I'm going to be taking profit around 30. Do you buy more? Do you get back in? Question. And the answer is, well, in hindsight, yes. But when it does not break down from this level, that's what you do when you're trading a stock. If you really believe in a company and you bought it for a reason and you know and you believe it can go higher. You can add on to that position, but this is a period of one, two, three, four. I mean, you got five months. You're just basically trading sideways here, trying to figure out are we going to go higher or not. Um, and until you don't, until you know, you know, this is their next target. And then also, what would be your target to the downside? So that would be where I would chart next. So if we had a period high to a period low, I would go to what I knew to be the high here. When this particular little candle here did not um, break above, it's now telling me that I have a, a period high that is defined. So I can draw that. So my target to buy would, would have been down in here between this 50 uh, and the 61.8. This is where I would want it, wanted to have buy, bought sorry, on a shorter time frame. The longer time frame on this is winning to me. Understand like in the, in the monthly, Instead of just trading this little move here in course of this year, from the bigger picture here, we can clearly see this level holding. So it's something that you do need to consider when you're doing Fibonacci's is who am I trading against or who am I trading with? How long are they going to be in a position? What is their ultimate goal in the stock? Because I don't have the count size to push AMD wherever I want it to go. But conglomerately and, and together, Retail has a say, but big money is going to decide where this thing's going. 
and we just need to follow wherever they're going. So if, if their Fibonacci's are programmed into their algorithms, this is something I have to I have to look at and I have to consider. And it looks to me, this particular stock, the answer is yes. Fibonacci's has some kind of say in what they're intending to do in particular and strategic levels. So if I take that into consideration, I didn't get the pullback. I don't need this. I'm going to remove this drawing completely. We're still on, still utilizing this particular Fibonacci we already had drawn. So now I can actually go from when we broke above this level and beyond the 100 in here, now I have a new period high that is defined. So I can go period low, sorry, high to low to high. So where would I pull back to? High to low. This isn't a period high. I could have drawn it from it, but it doesn't work on the longer time frame. On the longer time frame, this can work. Where could we go from here? Right? So if I attained all the way up here at this 161.8, we got there. You can move the Fibonacci around a little bit if you want, but this kind of falls within the same sequence. I'm going to expand it out a little bit here. You have overlapping hundreds. This zone. Would you have gotten stopped out here? Yeah. You could have gotten stopped out short too. <laughs> this candle can matter in the future, but the zone holds on the second test. So what we ended up with is up, we go right through the 61.8. It spends very little time on the following candle testing that area again. We go back up to the 50, it's a rejection. It dips below the 100. And then we have favor at the 100, where you get overlapping Fibonacci levels. And then off we go. So now that I have a period low and a period high, I know what we could do. And this might be a little, you have to do whatever's comfortable for you. But what I would do, instead of drawing it from period low to period high, to period low, I mean here, I would draw it from here. It's just a matter of preference. Why? Because this looks like a knee-jerk reaction. This particular very deep wick candle could have been an after hours or a pre-market where five shares are traded. And then there's the price. I don't know. But it looks to me like this is more of a stop loss type of candle overall in the bigger picture. This is a defined candle that I want to take a great deal of note on. Why? Because look, it made the entire move inside the 100. The 100 to a zero twice. You have this entire move right here and this entire move right here. We covered the whole span in a matter of two months after this. So it's just me. I would prefer to draw it from that level. I hope that makes sense. So if I leave it there and take this one out, I no longer need it. And now I have a period low to a period high to, I'm going to call it a period low instead of this. Where can I set my targets? Again, for a retracement at this level, resistance coincides with right here. I'm trying to get around the uh, zoom thing. And that's uh, a little bit of my way on the drawing tools here. But there we go. Okay, this would be where I would take profit. As we can see, this thing didn't yeah, waste any time. It went right through the 61.8 and, and done some. So would I take profit here? Yes. Would I get back in? Absolutely. What's above here? What's, where's my resistance? I don't have any. Everything now in this particular situation on EMD is all theory. It's all about... What's my emotional level? But now look where I went on the same move, period low to period high to period low. If I drew it from here, right at the 161.8. And it spent zero time wasting to get up there. So now I've got a few overlapping Fibonacci levels that I should be looking at at this point if I'm in an AMD trade. This is clearly one, 161.8. And now I've got an overlapping level. Um, right in here, the 50 and the 161.8. This box, I drew it there because this could be a key area to pay attention to in the future. 
not only could it be potential support because it was once resistance, but it also coincides with the Fibonacci level on a potential pull from the first time it blew right through it. Because let's look at it from the bigger picture here, guys. If you're a volume trader, how much volume do you really have at this price level from 58 bucks to, I, I gotta shrink this down so I can see what I'm looking at. Yeah, there you go. From $58 all the way up into $74. There's, I don't have a volume profile in here, but I can tell you it's not gonna be a lot. Okay, so it spent very little time going up there. At some point, a volume trader knows it's gonna wanna fill that gap in. So it's a key area. I'm drawing it because it makes sense. You have overlapping fibs and that would have been a profit taking area. So suffice to say, I would consider that for something in the future. Um, now that we've done that move, we can chart the next one. So maybe I take this and I can do like we did before, edit the properties. I don't need I don't want everything in there. And I can also minimize it down and make it hash marks and everything else. Again, you guys have to do what works for you. But I want the key areas, the 50 to 61.8. Or if you want to do recurring areas, recurring areas would be a repeated level. Like if a particular ticker that you are looking at likes a 78.6 level over and over and over and over again. Don't ignore it because the 61.8 is a normal course where you would take profit. It's just, for whatever reason, the algorithms are programmed to do that, and the traders follow right along with it. So don't ignore historical data that you get when you're doing it, and you're, if you're using Fibonacci to take into consideration with all of the other indicators and volume that you are currently using in your trading analysis. So when you're projecting it, you can get a realistic assessment of what could be different in the future based on the past. Um, not saying that it's always going to repeat itself. I'm not saying that the same algorithms that we're trading before are trading it today. That could all be a wash. It could all be very different, but you should be looking at those levels to take into consideration with your overall strategy. What makes sense to you? Okay. Um, but now we've hit the hundred. We clearly have areas where it's retested and tested and tested again. I want to draw another one, right? So I've got the period high, period low to high. I now have a, a defined period high. Let's call it this, because it's tested it several times. I can go back to the low. I'm gonna use the same low I used before. Oop. Sorry, I keep doing that. All right, try it again. High to low. Now we have a new period high. So I can actually draw it off of that I'm going to actually just use the 161.8. It's already been there. Again, you can't be wrong actually doing it from the actual high. It's just for me, a lot of times, again, when you're looking at monthly candles, I don't know how much volume is there for right now. I'm not going to go back into the history and actually dig in and look. I would just prefer to draw it inside of corresponding zones when they're that close together. I hope that makes sense. Same with these two 100s. This is clearly a zone now that I consider it overlapping because they're so close together. I can draw a box right inside those zones like that. Is that a, a zone to consider? Yes, because I haven't made this move yet. I made this move or this high. And if I know this is a period high and the next candle tells me that, how far low can I go over the course of this month? This would be my first target. And if we go below that, I'm here. I'm buying here. But we actually succeed. It holds. And the concept, and the following month, test that area one more time, it goes right back to where it was. So where would I take profit that time? In the same box right in here, which is why you see it, the funky position that this particular candle is in in the first place. Because when it broke down into here, Right, because this I know it's how it shows how it opens and closes, but guys, these are month long candles. We're not going to be spot on. I mean, I think you can understand this is all kind of flowing from month to month. So let's take this into the daily because now we're all the way up into year. I hope there's no questions on that. Um, I just want to show you the daily really quickly on the extensions, 
And then I'm going to get into a couple more things on spirals, arcs, and fans. It's going to be very brief on that simply because I only use them to determine potential time frames, not um, price levels, if that makes sense. Um, so let's do the, okay. So now that we've charted off the monthly, you can actually see how this looks on the dailies with each candle representing one day of price action. And we can see how, how it goes up, where it comes back down to. What does it test here? So we didn't see this because we were char charting on much larger candles over a longer period of time. So what we can do, okay, is chart from a period low. We're just going to take this one with the right drawing. There we go. To the period high. And if we're testing this period low in here, where could it potentially go in the future? Here. If you're bullish case for this stock and you're a Fibonacci trader, it's the only thing that you're really using. You're taking profit just over almost 100 bucks. That's where it wants to go for the next target. It's already made this line. Can it pull back from that if this is the period high? You draw another Fibonacci. Because you've got a whole move inside here to take into consideration. Period low, period high, period low. Okay. And we broke right above that 100. You guys can already see. It went right through the 61.8. See a little bit of a overlapping um, consolidation in here. Wasn't sure if we were going to reject or not. But sure enough, broke above, went to the 100, and now this is back in a recurring zone. What's, so what's going on right now with the MD? Well, we have this 161.8. We have the zero. We have, we've already tested this area before. We have a 38.2 from this particular move. And if we're looking inside the smaller time frame right in here, the most recent move from September to October, and we're looking at, uh, this move, we've already broken above the 100. So we have a very key area going on here. We have overlapping Fibonacci's right in here in this particular section and a, a previous period high. Until we get above that, this is telling me until we can confirm we're going to break out, we're not going here. Where we could go, high. Uh, let me just delete some of these drawings out of here. They almost got too much going on. There we go. So period low, high, and then low. We have already charted that one. So now if that's the period high, period high, low to high here, I want to see what we can pull back to for me to get in. Here. Maybe I buy, if I'm trying to long AMD and I'm bullish to this area over 100, my next consideration to buy it if it's not already breaking out and holding this level, which it could do, is to pull back into here. And I would like to do it in a short period of time. Why? Because if you guys can draw a mental trend line right down here along the, along the bottom, you can see it intersect right in this section here in a very near future, like within a couple of days. So it would be a relatively aggressive pullback, okay, to get into this $87, $88 range. We only have a few days to do it. Otherwise, it's not, this is not going to make any sense for this trend line. It's going to break the trend and we could end up who knows where. I don't even want to guess at this point. Um, but this would be where I would start. Otherwise, I mean, we could be looking at 80, even $75 if it breaks down. But this is where it wants to go. It wants to go over 100 bucks on the targets that we have projected. And there's no resistance here. So, you know, other than a period high that it's tested, what's telling me that this is a period to sell? Nothing yet. Um, so that's it for the Fibonacci uh, extensions. Um, I hope that makes sense on how to chart them. You're going from period high to period low to the next period high or period low to the high to the low. In any event, you're looking for a retracement back to a level that it has already been 
or a projection on where it could go from where it currently is. It just depends. So if you're short, naturally, everything that we've been doing, you are wanting to short it from here to cover in here, take some position. Maybe you get completely out. Maybe you want to take some profit and you finish covering down here, or maybe you cover down here where the 161.8 meets the zero, meets the hundred, and is a one, two, three, four times at the support level, it's already been filling in this little tiny volume profile gap right here. So maybe this is where I cover. Whatever your goal or intention is, you chart it out with Fibonacci's and you can set your limits and set your, your areas of interest from that.